Solid.js is a JavaScript library to create a user interface with an API very similar to React that is gaining more and more popularity on Twitter and GitHub, especially for its performance very close to vanilla JavaScript and its simplicity. In this video, I want to quickly introduce Solid.js and show you how to create a reactive state, derive a state, manage the life cycle and create a simple crude application. However, I suggest you to watch the videos you can find in the official website to learn the basics. The first step is the creation of a new Solid.js project, and you can simply do it by cloning the repository you can find in the official Solid.js website. This project uses Vite behind the scene, and you can start the project by using npm run dev. As you can see, the structure is very similar to a React project. index.jsx file simply renders app component into the root HTML element that you can find in the index.html file. A component is a simple function that renders a template by using JSX, exactly just like happened in React application. And as you can see, this component is rendered once when the application starts. Before we create a simple crude application, I want to quickly show you how state works, and this is also very similar to React. You can simply define a state by using create signal, that it returns a tuple, where the first element is the state and the second is the function to update it. In React, it's called useState, and it's very similar, but the main difference is that you can get the state by calling it as a function. And if you want to update the state, we can simply invoke setCount adding one to the current count. The real difference with React is that each time you update the state, the component is not rendered anymore, but we just render only the part of the template that used the state. And this is a huge performance improvement since, thanks to this mechanism, we can avoid a lot of problems we have in React. In fact, we don't need to memoize stuff with memo, use callback, and use other tricks to avoid useless renders. Now, I want to show you how the createEffect function works. At the first glance, it would look very similar to React use effect, but it works in a different way. First time the component is rendered, the createEffect is invoked, but when we update the state, this is not invoked anymore. But when we use a reactive property inside it, just like our state, the createEffect is automatically invoked when the property or the state is updated. And this is another difference, since in React we need to manually specify an array of dependencies to define when the use effect should be invoked, and often we need to include some properties we don't really need just to avoid ESLint warnings or to follow the React guidelines. Honestly, I think this approach is much more clear, creates less confusion, and it's very similar to what Vue.js and Svelte do. When we need to create a derived state, we could simply update our JSX template and add an expression, but to maintain the reactivity provided by the state, we can simply create a new function that inside it uses the state itself. In this way, each time the state changes, the double count is updated as well. Furthermore, if we also use the new derived state in a createEffect function, it will be invoked each time it changes. If we needed to perform an action when the component is mounted, we could simply add our expressions inside the function, since it's invoked once. But we also have some useful lifecycle functions, just like on mount and on cleanup, that are invoked when the component is mounted or destroyed. Here you can see how I use on mount to fetch data and add the result to a new user state. And when the state is updated, I just print the result in the JSX template by using a JSON stringify function. As the SolidJS documentation explains, JSX allows you to use JavaScript to control the logic flow in the templates. However, since SolidJS does not use virtual DOM, the use of features like array map could waste resources. So, reactive libraries, just like Solid, often use template helpers wrapped in components. Now, we can display a list of elements by using the built-in for component, very similar to the Vue.js before, the Angular ng4 directive, or in React when we use the array map function. We can also use the show component to decide when a part of the template should be displayed. In this case, we display the button when the index is greater than 5, 
and we can also provide a fallback to display something else when the condition returns false. Now we can simply delete an item by invoking the delete user function and passing the user ID we want to remove. This step is very similar to what I usually do in React. I use fetch and async await to get data and update the state removing the element I don't need anymore. Of course, I should handle the errors, but it's not really important now to understand how solid works. I can also add an input text and listen for the keydown event. When user press enter, we get the event target value property and as we did before, we can invoke the API by using the post method and pass as payload an object that contains the value of the input. Finally, we have the state adding the user returned by the post and that's all. Okay, that's all for this video. Let me know if you are interested in learning more about this topic. In the next video, we will analyze other interesting features such as the component management, state management, directives and more. Bye.